Good evening, everyone. Habari Zagioni. Everybody happy tonight? All right. It's good to see so many people out tonight. God be praised. Let's get right into it with our hymn of meditation. It's an old standard favorite of mine. And those of us who have been Adventists for a long time, this is one of the beautiful hymns of the church. It's a commitment song, hymn, and we'll sing it prayerfully. I love thee, I love thee. Let me see those who know this hymn. 10% of the congregation, you'll learn it tonight. I love thee, I love thee, I love thee, my Lord. I love thee, my Savior. I love thee, my God. Prayerfully. I'll 
praise Him. I'll praise Him with no loud and clear. While we was of pleasure, my spirit do cheer. Somebody say amen. I want to challenge your pastor tonight. You know, at Santon, every Every quarter, we have what we call hymn fest. And we learn new hymns that the congregation is not accustomed to. Old Adventists, we knew all the hymns. This generation, this generation is illiterate when it comes to hymns. We need to praise him, what you say. And you sounded it so good. God bless you. Thank you so kindly. Give them a hearty amen. 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 Hymn Fest. And there's a bunch of hymns from 400 in the SDA hymnal are Seventh-day Adventist hymns written by Seventh-day Adventist authors. And those hymns, like the one we sang last night, at the end, they, come, they came out of the great disappointment. When they realized Jesus didn't come, a lot of them decided to leave. But they wrote some hymns to bring them back. And lots of those hymns from 400 back are SD hymns. And we learn at least two at every hymn fest. I challenge your pastor. But pastor, you vote. All in, say, all in favor say aye. Opposing it is carried. Thank you so much. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we have come this evening because we love you. Because we know that you loved us first. And so, Father, we give our hearts to you one more time. Speak through your manservant. I'll be obedient. In Jesus' name, amen. This evening, our message comes out of the book of Genesis, the book of Beginnings, chapter 4 to 1. And I want to read in you here in verses 45 to 52. Genesis chapter 4 to 1. Verses 45 to 52. Then Pharaoh gave Joseph a new name, Zephanath Paneah. He also gave him a wife whose name was Asenath. She was the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. So Joseph took charge of the entire land of Egypt. He was 30 years old when he began serving in the court of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And when Joseph left Pharaoh's presence, he inspected the entire land of Egypt. As predicted, for seven years, the land produced bumper crops. During those years, Joseph gathered all the crops grown in Egypt and stored the grain from the surrounding fields in the cities. He piled up huge amounts of grains like sand on the seashore. Finally, he stopped keeping records because there was too much to measure. During this time, before the first of the famine years, two sons were born to Joseph and his wife. Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. Joseph named his older son Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my troubles and everyone in my father's family. Joseph named his second son Ephraim, for he said, 
God has made me fruitful in the land of Egypt. Tonight I have good news for biblically defined married couples. Now Joseph, son of Jacob, whom we discussed yesterday, is one biblical model for manhood who needs to be lifted up over and over again, especially for all young African males, whether here on the continent or in the diaspora, to see and to emulate this man, Joseph. He came, as you know, from some adverse circumstances. But he did not let nor allow his circumstances to circumscribe his possibilities. He overcame adversaries and he worked hard at becoming the best person that he could be. When he was scarcely a teenager, he lost his mother, Rachel, when she surprisingly died in childbirth. His papa, Jacob, was a rolling stone. I'll define that later. He had children by four different women. It's in the book. Take a look. If ever you doubt, grab the text. Jacob had six boys and one girl by Leah, two boys by Rachel, two boys by Bilhah, Rachel's maid, and two other boys by Zilpah, Leah's maid. Papa, indeed, was a rolling stone. Now what we're talking about here this evening is a messed up family. One of his half-brothers, Reuben, talking of Joseph's half-brothers, Reuben, slept with one of his father's women. And Joseph's old man, Jacob, had two problems. First, he had four women. How many did he have? He must have been African. <laughs> one love ahead. One love behind. One in his arms. And one in his mind. Why are we getting this feedback? The devil doesn't want us to hear this message. Joseph's father, as we call them back in the U.S., was a pistol. <laughs> and he had two problems. His second and main problem was that he was married to one woman, Leah, and was in love with another woman, Rachel. One strike Joseph had going against him was the home from which he came out and the circumstances surrounding his upbringing and the poor role models of manhood that he saw up close while he was still a little boy. By the time he was 17, he had seen it all. I'm talking about hated by his half-brothers. He was launched into the world from a dysfunctional family. He was cut off from all the support systems he had known as a child. Even though those support 
systems were flawed and flaky. In addition to his genealogical strike, he had a physiological as well as a sociological strike against him. I'll break that down. Physiologically, ladies, Joseph was well built and good looking. He was distractingly attractive. He was what he was, he was what the ladies would term as a hunk. Now remember what a rolling stone his daddy had been. A rolling stone means going from one woman to one woman to one woman. And remember what a terrible example Jacob had set for Joseph. Are you listening to me tonight? I'm talking about messed up. He be, and then, to make matters worse, he became a victim of an unjust criminal justice system. Falsely accused. Like a lot of black men in the U.S. and here on the continent. He was lied on with the cards stacked against him. And false witness telling stories on him. Thrown into jail and forgotten. But yet, Joseph did not allow his circumstances to circumscribe his possibilities. Joseph was nothing like his daddy. Young brothers, if you're here tonight, hear me. Don't let anybody tell you cause your daddy was nothing before you. You ain't amount to nothing. Don't believe that lie. Are you listening to me? Look at Joseph. Don't let anybody tell you because you came from a messed up family that you are going to be messed up. Look at Joseph. Don't let anybody tell you with the lie that everything looking good to you is automatically good for you. If you can't say amen, say oh me. <laughs> Look at Joseph. Joseph did not let his genealogical, physiological, or sociological circumstances to circumscribe his possibilities. His theology outweighed his genealogy, physiology, and sociology. Are you listening to me? If somebody tells you that you can't make it because you came from a single family, parent family, you boldly, I give you permission to boldly look that person in the eye and tell them that Pastor Lester Aubrey Parkinson told you to tell them, so did Joseph. He came from a dysfunctional family. So did Barack Obama. He came from a dysfunctional family. Listen to me. God is a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. If anybody tells you that you can't make it because you are darkened by nature, son, meaning that you're black or you're too short, too tall, too nondescript, too light-skinned, too nappy-headed, that you have to buy I'm getting into trouble now. A wig. Brazilian wig. Made in China. <laughs> Ladies, you say love me. <laughs> or you're too dark. Or you're too cute. Or you're too not too cute. Or you're too skinny. Or you're too not too skinny. I got to be politically correct. Or your hair is not as good as a white person. You tell that person that God can take you just as you are and get the glory out of your life. Are you listening to me? You just straighten up your shoulders and look that person eyeball to eyeball and with confidence say, you looking at me on the outside. 
But my God looks at the heart. He can take me and do just what he wants with me. And they ain't, this is bad English, but it makes sense. And they ain't nothing you can do about it. Because my father's got all power in his hands. If anybody tells you that you can't make it. Because you came from the ghetto. The murkiest part of Nairobi or from your countryside where you came from. Throw your head back. Throw your chest out. Walk by faith, knowing that all things through Christ can strengthen you. If your theology is straight, God can get the glory out of your life. Joseph did not let his circumstance to circumscribe his possibilities. He took what God gave him. And use it to the best of his ability. And the Lord blessed his life. Joseph is one biblical model of manhood. That needs to be lifted up again and again and again. For all my young African brothers to see, embrace and emulate. Are you listening to me tonight? Joseph models what I would call. Good news for married folks and those who want to get married. This is a timely message because many people are saying that the institution of the family is falling apart. So many people are saying that, it ain't, that marriage is not going to make it. But Joseph leaps off the pages of the Genesis story as a man who models good news. For marriage folks and single folks. Several young ladies that I know have one eye on the biological clock and another eye on the chronological clock and a weary eye on the horizon from a brother who has on his mind only sex. And ladies, some of you are getting tired of waiting. Some have given up. And some are about to give up. You get tired of being lonely. When you become lonely enough to start settling for anyone, especially if he has a J-O-B, how do you move from this position to giving up to a posture of looking up. We end over somebody's head. Giving up instead of looking up. Joseph's primary relationship was with God. How do you replicate a young man hmm, who plays by the rules? And especially in this game of life, he played in a fair and honest way. I think Joseph's story gives us some clues tonight. When you read Joseph's biography, one of the first things that impresses me is his unswerving, non-negotiable relationship with God. Listen to me tonight. When you have that primary relationship straight, other relationships are not as difficult to manage. But a whole lot of us, unlike Joseph, have not even thought about God until after we are married. And then the marriage gets in trouble. After we have moved from what the marriage counselors call the being in love stage to the struggle for power and control stage. Who's going to be in charge in here? Hello, somebody. Who has the ultimate control in the relationship? I'm a man. I got to make, and I've got to make more money than you. And I'll tell you what you spend and what you don't spend. Mm? Does that sound familiar, ladies? 
You're all quiet. You're not going to get into trouble. You tell them, Pastor Parkinson, get him. Then the wife says, okay, Mr. Macho, you can talk all that smack you want, but I've got keys to the kitchen and keys to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Then he fires back. <laughs> hey, that ain't no thing. I got a girl down in the valley and another one on the hill. And when I want some loving, if my valley don't do me right, I got my, my hill, oh, who will? Then the sister fires back. Yeah. Well, you make sure you stay out there with your hill. Because mother wifey here will kill. And that happens. And then the marriage gets into trouble. Because there's a struggle for power and control. And when we stop majoring in Luther, Luther, what's his name? Luther Vandross type of love and Lionel Richie type of love and Gladys Knight type of love. And, and then when, 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 when some folks stop thinking about God but more about power and control. But if like Joseph, if we have the good relationship straight before we start talking about a marriage relationship, the marriage relationship would not be as difficult to manage. Is somebody hearing me tonight? And I'll be the first to admit, church, I will be the first to admit that marriage is not easy stuff. I can tell you, it's not easy. One of the lessons that Joseph teaches us that he brings good news for marriage in marriages that are not easy. And let me, let me, let me park the car and, and keep the, the engine running. Gentlemen, listen to me. You are not going to win arguments with your wife. Because whenever you got her cornered, she'll change the subject on you. Am I telling truth? They know how to win an argument. And I have learned to sing, I surrender all. <laughs> and I will, then the marriage stays happy because they are, they have inborn, inborn lawyer mentality. They know how to argue. So I tell you, marriage is not easy. But one of the lessons that Joseph teaches us as he brings good news to marriage and the clue to what he's saying is in the names that he gives his boys. Look at the first son's name, Manasseh. God has made me forget all my sufferings. Marriage is not easy. Marriage is hard work. And one of the least like truths that marriage couples have to face. And we men, especially black men, African men, we men have a real problem with this one. That you don't win all the time. Gentlemen, say amen. You aren't right all the time. And it isn't going to be your way all the time. You know what? An elderly deacon in one of my churches back in the States taught me a lesson that I've never forgotten. He summed this thing up about control for me many years ago. He, he told me, he said, Pastor, me and my wife were discussing an issue. And he said, Pastor, she thinks she's always right because she has all that education and all those degrees. I ain't never right in her sight because I haven't, don't have any degree. But pastor, I happen to know that even a clock that doesn't work is at least right twice a day. It went over somebody's head. Whoop. You're not right all the time. You don't win all the time. Gentlemen, and it isn't going to be your way all the time. That part of the marriage that the Apostle Paul addressed when he was referring to the, those who he wrote to the church at Colossae. He said, you know, the men like the ones in Philippians. 
Men, women submit yourselves to your husbands. But it says, as unto the Lord. And they don't, we don't quote that. But Paul is saying here to, to, to Colossians, submit yourselves to one another. Somebody say amen. amen. You must have some give and take. You don't need to win all the time. You need to find ways to compromise. You give in sometimes. She give in sometimes. You give in sometimes. And he give in sometimes. Narcissism. This, this word. This word. Narcissism. You know what that means? Me. Mine. Alone. It starts to melt when you give in to one another. Me, mine, and my. Me, my, and mine starts to melt and evaporate into we, ours, and us. And that isn't easy. Especially with the philosophies that we carry around with us. You know, the philosophies, mother isn't going to have her some, is always rather, Mother is always, always going to have some mad or angry money stashed away somewhere. Right this here? Or somewhere else. Homegirl always keeps one credit card clear. Don't be no fool, bro. Women can... And they can always take you to the cleaners if you want to control all the time. Especially if Almighty God is not in the equation. The late Dr. Samuel DeWitt Proctor, one of my theological instructors, my preaching mentors, he said to me one time that if he had not had his relationship with Jesus straight and hard and remember that Jesus said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. If he hadn't have the ethical, or heard from Jesus, the ethical norms of his Savior during his four to five years of marriage, he would have been headed for the divorce course every other week. Hey, y'all, new life. Marriage is hard work. I heard an old brother got into trouble one time. I went to this pastor's conference. In Virginia. And this, 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 this old man was preaching. And he started quoting that old chauvinistic line and basing it on Genesis. This old preacher, and he was black, he said, Adam, hear me, church. He said, Adam, this is not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm quoting the preacher. Is that right? All right. He said, is that clear? Adam, he said, Adam didn't have any problems when he was all by himself. And the sisters in the congregation started getting quiet. But the brother pastor wouldn't quit. He said, there was no tension in the garden when Adam was alone. There was no disagreement <laughs> in the garden. <laughs> Wasn't <laughs> he said there was no disappointment in the Garden of Eden. He said there was no disobedience in the Garden of Eden. As long, he said, as long as Brother Adam was by himself, there were no problems. He said only when women were created, they were put together, then there were problems. And the sisters in the congregation were getting quieter and quieter and madder and madder and angrier and angrier and upsetter and more upset. And then one sister hollered out, yes, he didn't have no problems, but he didn't have no pleasure either. <laughs> Hallelujah. Case was closed. <laughs> Marriage is both pleasure and problems. Are you listening to me? Marriage is hard work. 
By the way, that pre- he had to run out to that congregation because those sisters were waiting for him in their outside. You see, marriage brings both hardship and suffering. For Manasseh means God made me forget all my sufferings. And the good news tonight for marriage folks is that God will fix it. If you keep God central in your situation, I say God will fix it. God would make you forget all your sufferings. Marriage is hard work and it requires hard work. But then look what else Joseph teaches us. Some good lessons. Look at the second son's name. Ephraim. God has given me children in the land, in my land of trouble. After all that time, Joseph got married to a foxy black lady, an African queen, whose shape was 36, 24, 36. Married to a preacher's daughter. Her daddy was priest in the Sun City. She knew the secrets, sacred secrets, and she knew the sensuous secrets, and Joseph was number two in the government, and he had his own Egyptian Maserati to ride in. And Pharaoh gave him Air Force Two to get around him. The brother had fine clothes on his back, gold on his neck and fingers, and authority and prosperity. All that after all that time, as a single man, Joseph still had trouble. Tr- trouble. When he got married, he still had trouble. You see, tr- marriage is non-stop work. And trouble doesn't stop the longer you stay married. It doesn't matter what you achieve on the outside of your home. Mr. and Mrs. Kenyan government official. Mr. Supreme Court judge. Mr. CEO. Mr. Preacher. You still have to work on your marriage at home. And sometimes... Trouble is going to meet you right in the home. Because marriage is non-stop work. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But if you look at Joseph. You'll see that God is still kept central in the midst of his trouble. And in spite of his trouble. You don't have to give up on God. Because things aren't going the way you wanted them to go. For if Joseph's life teaches us anything, it is that it is not about how you started out. He he was doomed to fail if his origination was any measure of his destination. Whoop, it went over somebody's head. I say it again. His marriage would have been doomed to fail if his origination in the pit. Are you listening to me? In the palace. In the prison. If all of those were any measure of his destination. It's not about how you started out. New life listen to me. It's not how you started out. It is about how you kept working at it. Saying to yourself. I can do all things to Christ. Who strengtheneth me. I want the Lord to help me keep at it. His life also teaches us. That. It is not how we look on the outside. It's all about what you look on the inside. Say no to yourself. I want to look pretty on the inside. And this life teaches us that anything worthwhile requires hard work. Anything worthwhile takes time. But tonight I want you to know there's somebody bigger than the two of you. Are you listening to me? And Joseph said, God has given me children in the land of my trouble. Here Joseph brings some good news to new life. And for my friends who aren't married too, you don't have to give up on the ideal. No matter how different or difficult your situation is, as compared to the ideal, you walk on by faith. Have you stumbled and fallen? Get up and walk on by faith. Hear me tonight. Trouble is real. 
but so is God. My God is real. And faith is a victory. God will be with you through your suffering. God will be with you in your land of trouble. Is your situation troublesome? Does it not look anything like Joseph's? I urge you tonight, new life. Get up and walk by faith. I have one friend who told me as I'm winding down that it gets lonely. It gets really lonely. You're overwhelmed by not having that special someone in his life with no matter what. Well, when it gets like that, young person, don't give up. Get up and walk by faith. The problems are real. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I may not go. But this one thing that I do know, my God is real. And I can feel him deep within. And he knows all about my problems. I once heard of a famous African-American preacher while he was preaching at another minister's conference. He said that in cases where your marriage seemed to be in trouble, you have to rebuke your revelation. When it has been revealed to you that you are lonely and that you might be alone. And some art folks, by the way, are also lonely. Hello? Still lonely. I urge you tonight, rebuke that revelation. Let me make this plain. All revelations are not good. Hello? That rascal, the devil, will show you some things about yourself to have you walking around in your head, hung down, feeling sad, feeling bad, depressed, and down on yourself. I know you don't believe me, how you're looking at me. But think about how the devil reveals to us all of our weaknesses, all of our failings, all the stuff that we messed up with, all that we don't want anybody to know about. But that same devil uses somebody and that person mischievously comes to you after Sabbath school and shows your problems to you that they've been discussing about you. Yes, you know God has forgiven you about it already. But the devil doesn't want you to see it. The devil wants to dwell in it. Wallow in it. Think of how the devil reveals to you what should have, could have, would have. If only looking at your failed marriage. If only looking at your failed relationship. If only looking at your child who's on drugs. If only looking where you are now as opposed to where you could have been. You've got to rebuke that revelation. Say it to Satan. You are not to be trusted. Tell Satan you're a liar. Get out of my sight. Rally your resources. You've got to rally your resources. I say you've got to rally your resources. And you've got to get some resources. Faith is one of those resources. You recall faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. You've got to look the devil and tell him, no, Mr. Devil. That your marriage may not be making it. But I'm going to keep on walking by faith. But the Bible says the just shall live by faith. And you only have faith. And you also have a prayer resource. <laughs> you not, have not only have to, be, to talk to God in prayer. We do too much of that. But also let God talk to you in prayer. Listen to him tell you. You're mine. I made you. Hello. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the root of Jesse. I am the good shepherd. I feel like preaching now. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the bread when you're hungry. Water when you're thirsty. I'm the bridge over troubled waters. I'm your iniquity atoner. 
I'm your water walker. I'm your happiness restorer. I'm your friend when you don't have one. Yes, your, prever- your problems may be real, but your God is just as real. And God told me to tell you tonight, I am the great problem solver. Hey, New Life family, listen to your preacher tonight. There are some things I may not know. There are some places. But this one thing I'm sure, when you let God talk to you, he'll tell you and positively assist you on your marriage, marital journey. He'll put a little fire down there on the inside and start something to turning. Sometimes you're done all by yourself. You may be alone, but you're not lonely because you could feel God deep within. And with God on the inside, things somehow start better on the outside. No, things haven't changed in terms of your location, but your situation gets better when you start focusing on God. And not on yourself. Love at home. Love at home. Put it on the screen, please. As we end this service tonight. There is beauty all around when there's love at home. There is joy, hello, in every sound when There's love at home. Peace and plenty. Here abide. Smiling fair on every side. You know, I've seen, I've been looking at some of your men here. They feel their faces would crack if they smile. When you're happy on the inside, it shows on the outside. Happy all the time. Peace and plenty. Time doth softly, sweetly glide. New life when there's love at home. That's my good news to you tonight for marriage folks. And those who plan to get married, rekindle that marriage by bringing God in the equation. Sing it. Move it quickly. and plenty peace and plenty here abide smiling fair on every side time time not softly sweetly glide when there's love at home everybody sing it now love at home love Softly, sweetly glide when there's love at home. Kindly heaven smiles above. Oh, yes, when there's love at home. Sweeter sings the Brooklyn. All the earth we fill with love when there's love at home. Sweeter sings the brooklet by. Sweeter sings the brooklet. Brighter beams the azure Brighter sky. Beams azure the sky. There's one who smiles on high. There's one who smiles on high. When there's love at home. Let me hear you sing it over here. Love at home. Love at home. Time 
fields of leaves sweetly glide when this hour at home Jesus let me holy die then this love at home may the sacrifice be From all harm I'll rest. Safely from all harm I'll rest. With no sinful care, distress. Through thy tender mercy, bless. Oh yes, when there's love at home. Let the devil hear you sing it. Love at home. Oh yes. Is there someone here tonight, a man, a woman, a couple, who want to say, Jesus, make me holy thine? If you're here, would you just stand to your feet, wherever you are? Wherever you are. If you want your marriage to work, your husband may not be here, your wife may not be here, but you want to say, Lord, Savior, make me holy thine. I want love to be the main ingredient of my home. And heaven will be happy. And you will have a happier existence. Because God has obligated himself to come into your home and to keep you happy. It doesn't mean that it wouldn't be work. But put men, black men, I'm talking to you tonight. Model Christ in your home. Jesus was not a dictator. Hello? Here's our model, isn't he? Isn't Jesus our model? Why are you whispering? Isn't Jesus our model? Yes, yes he is. He was not authoritarian. It takes two to make it. It is your desire tonight to turn your marriage over to Jesus. Is it? Take, if, if it is, to put your hand up somebody. You want to turn your marriage over to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. There may be some, you can take them down. There may be some young people here tonight who did not married, but you want to say, Pastor, I am determined to keep myself pure and to trust God in my lonely hours so that he could be my companion. If you're young here tonight, you're not married, you want somebody to pray for you tonight, I'm going to ask my pastor to come up again, Pastor Okali, to pray for married people and single people. If the single people here tonight, you want to say, I want Jesus to be with me. In my lonely hours. If you're here tonight, put your hand up wherever you are. The single folk. Hands have been raised all over this place. Thank God for you. And tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow evening, I'm going to preach a special sermon for you. So that you can know that you can make it. You can make it. You can make it. Pastor, pray for us. Let's sing that last stanza again. Jesus, make me holy thine. And our pastor will pray for us and then we'll try to send you home. Jesus, make me holy thine, holy thine, then there's love at home, may the sacrifice be mine, then there's love at home, set me from Here you sing it. Love at home. Oh yes. Love at home. Time not softly, sweetly glide. When there's love at home.
in the name of Jesus. Yes. With gratitude in our hearts before your presence and in the name of Jesus, we come this evening just to say thank you once again for the blessings of your word. Thank you for the way you've spoken to us since we began this come meeting up until today. Thank you, dear Lord, for the message tonight. Thank you, Lord, for caring for our families sufficiently to bring us this message. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to the account about your man, servant, Jacob's family. Many of us can identify with this family. Many of us have come from such dysfunctional backgrounds. But we are grateful to know this evening, Lord, that despite the background, something good can come out of that bad background. Yes, yes whereas Joseph came from a broken background, you made him strong to stand for you. Yes. Father, we thank you. May the brokenness, may our brokenness not discourage us May we find encouragement in the account that you've given us this evening. Thank you, Lord. May your name be praised and be honored. Thank you, Lord, for Joseph. We praise your name that Joseph stood for you. And here, many of your children, young men, stand now on their feet in the request, Lord, that you will keep them pure like you kept Joseph pure. You have done this to many young men. May you do for them. Every young girl and every young man who is here, may you help them, Lord, to go after the, the example of Joseph. For this way they are blessed. May you help them, Lord, to get to this point where they are living a pure life, trusting in you to do it at the right time when they finally get married. We thank you because you are faithful. Yes, Lord. For those of us who are married and are struggling with these things, dear Lord, we pray that you salvage our homes. We have stood on our feet in request, Lord, that you make us holy thine. Yes. Dear Lord, may this be an experience of each one and every one of us. The men who are here, the women who are here, all of us make us thine, dear Father. We thank you for your manservant, Pastor Lester. Thank you, Lord, for giving him these revelations, this insight that I tucked into your word, this light to shed it to our path. Now, Lord, we pray that you help us to walk in the instructions that have come our way through the light that have been given to us from your word. May this be our experience, for we pray and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you. See you tomorrow.